Hi, welcome to this new video about the messages exchange in the SDD core and B2B schemes. The message we are considering today is the PAYING2. PAYING stands for payment initiation. But as we will see, this message is used in the context of payment initiation, but not to initiate payments. I will first give you an overview of all the messages exchanged in the SDD core and B2B schemes. Then we will see which parties exchange the pain to. Then we will look at the pain to identity card. What's the name of the pain to? When was it born? And what is its place of residence? You probably think this guy is crazy. <laughs> he presents messages like people. Well, it is just a way to really get acquainted with those messages. If you work on a project, you will have to talk about them many, many times. After the pain to identity card, we will talk about the pain to message structure and building blocks. Why is the pain to message needed? And I will end the presentation with a focus on pain to reason codes. Let's begin with the overview of the messages that we find in the SDD core and B2B implementation guidelines documents. The pain to one tree is highlighted in green color. It is sent by the creditor bank to the creditor. In a previous video about the customer to bank space and the interbank space, I told you that message sent from bank to customer are reporting message. So the pain too is a reporting message. The customer must be informed if his instruction was rejected. And that information can be crucial in certain cases. Now let's take a closer look at the pain to identity call. The pain to is called customer payment status report message. Note that the same message is used in the SDD schemes and in the SCT, the SEPA credit transfer schemes. In SEPA, the version 3 is used, but the version 9 is already available in the ISO 2022 standards when I make this video. So the ISO 2022 standards is six versions ahead of SEPA. And now, of course, we can wonder why SEPA has not adopted the next versions of the PAIN 2? Well, it's probably because after considering the usage, the conclusion was that the version 3 is correct for SEPA needs. The PAIN 2 is a message exchange in the customer to bank space. So between the creditor bank and its customer, the creditor, as we saw. When a creditor sends a PAIN 8 message to its bank, the message might end up being rejected partially or totally for various reasons. When this happens, the creditor bank sends the pain to message to the creditor to inform him about the rejection. In certain cases, the creditor may receive many pain to messages from the creditor bank while the pain aid message is going through the different processing steps. Like many messages that we have considered so far, the pain to one tree was born on March 30th, 2009 and put into, put into its place of residence the message definition report. The file name is payment maintenance 2009.pdf. As the name of the message suggests, the pain to is used by the bank to send status reports after processing the instruction it receives from the creditor. Now, pay attention to this point. According to the SEPA guidelines, the pain to is sent only if there are rejections. But in the ISO 2022 standards, things are different. The customer payment status report can be used to inform the sender about the positive or negative status of its instruction or message. It can also be used to report on pending instruction or transactions in a message. This tells us that the pain to usage is very restricted and limited in the SEPA implementation guidelines. In reality, it is common for a bank to send pain to to the customer, even if the message was fully accepted. Now, how does a pain to message look like? The customer payment status report message is composed of three building blocks. The group header, the original group information and status, and the original payment information and status block. The group header is mandatory and present once. It contains, among other, the message identification, which allows customer and bank to unambiguously identify a message. The message ID is generated by 
the bank. The second block is the original group information and status. It is mandatory and present once. It gives information about the original message, the message identification and name, and why the message was rejected. The following requirement is made in SEPA implementation guidelines about the group status element found in this block. Group status, payment information status or transaction status must be present with the code RGCT. So it looks like the assumption in SEPA is that the pain to should be sent only if something wrong happens during the processing of the pain aid message. But corporate customers want to receive a pain to even if everything was okay. So banks and customers should go beyond SEPA to close this gap. Coming back to the group status, if present here, it means that the complete message was rejected since RGCT is the only code allowed. Now the final block, the original payment information and status is optional and repetitive. A message can contain several payment information blocks. If a message is rejected, then all payments information are also rejected. And the original payment information and status does not need to be present in the pane too. If one or several payments information of the message are rejected and not the complete message, then the original payment information and status must be present in the pane too for each payment information block that was rejected. A payment information can itself be partially or totally rejected. The payment information status is set to RGCT only if the payment information has been totally rejected. In case of partial rejection, the next block comes into play. The transaction information and status. As we see, that block is completely indented, embedded in the original payment information and status block. This block is optional and repetitive. If a payment information has been partially rejected, then the transaction status will be present for each rejected transaction. Remember that only RGCT is al allowed. Group status and payment information status elements do not have to be present since the rejection is neither at message level nor at order level but only at transaction level. Each transaction information and status element contains the detail of the transaction that was rejected and information like original instruction identification, original end-to-end -end identification that allow corporate customers to reconcile it with the original transaction that it sent. Note that there is no transaction identification which is generated and used by the creditor bank. Now, why is the pain to message actually needed? Well, the direct answer to this question are two words, exception handling. In an ideal world, only the pain aid message will be needed, but we know there is no process without exceptions. Exceptions can happen during the processing of the direct debit message and related instruction by the creditor bank. Issues can occur at message level, instruction level, or transaction level. As a result, the full pain aid message can be rejected or an instruction or a transaction in the pain aid message can be rejected. The rejections can occur for many reasons and that is where reason codes come into play. A reason code tells us why and for which reason a transaction, an instruction or a message was rejected. Let's finish this presentation by taking a closer look at them. In SEPA implementation guidelines documents, only the reason codes that are allowed in SEPA are listed. For the STD, you find them after the bank to customer reject direct debit data set description and under the paragraph message element specifications. The reason codes you see here is a subset of all possible reason codes that we find in the ISO 2022 standards. The exhaustive list of Reason codes is available in the external code set spreadsheet downloadable from the ISO 2022 website. In the video about the PAX form in the SCT schemes, you can see how to access the list of all reason codes. Check the end of that video if you want to download the spreadsheet and see the exhaustive list of reason codes for the pain 2 in general. That's the end of this presentation. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video.
If you found the presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to permantor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and video. Take care and see you soon on Permantor TV.